Hi, in this video, I'm going to introduce VTP, VLAN Trunking Protocol. Okay, so usually when we uh, configure VLANs, um, VLAN, adding VLANs, deleting VLANs, putting VLAN names, etc., we configure those VLANs on individual switches. And that may not be too much of an issue if you just have a few switches. But if you have dozens, hundreds, or even thousands of switches, uh, that can be a little bit more, well, a little bit more cumbersome um, and, and just, you know, take more time. So uh, before we get into VTP, let us just remind ourselves how to, con how to create VLANs manually. So here I'm on an individual switch. Remember, VLANs are created on the switch, not on the host device. Okay. So here, for example, I have a uh, device here, PCA, and PCA belongs to a specific subnet. And we associate that subnet with a VLAN on the switch. So the, the host itself doesn't really equate it to a VLAN, but the, we, the switch is where we actually configure the VLAN. So you can see here on switch one, we've configured this specific port and we could do a whole range of ports, but to VLAN 10, we give it a name, the name of the VLAN, HR. Uh, we do exit to get us out of VLAN configuration mode. And then it's in the interface mode that we actually configure the, uh, assign a port to a specific VLAN. First of all, we say switch port mode access. That's actually important because uh, if this port is for one specific VLAN and we do not want it to trunk, we don't want to connect another switch to that port, we need to do switch port mode access. This next command, switch port access VLAN 10, actually assigns that port to VLAN 10. Okay. All right, so VTP stands for VLAN Trunking Protocol. It's a layer two protocol, a Cisco proprietary protocol, that is actually an early step towards network automation. Uh, finding ways that we don't have to recreate the same commands or reconfigure the same commands on, on many, many switches across our network. But it's not without its detractors. Uh, and there are some issues, I'll mention an issue with uh, VTP in a later, later video, but um, it, so, you know, some network, network uh, engineers have no problem using VTP, others kind of shy, shy away from it. <clears throat> so VTP, by the way, its messages are, are transmitted over 802.1Q trunk links. So that's very important. The, the link between this switch and this switch to propagate VTP messages, and we'll see what this is all about a little bit in this video, more in later videos, uh, has to be a trunk link. Yep. All right. Erase that. Okay. So, what is the process of uh, using VTP? Okay. So, the typically a network administrator will have a one or more VTP server switches. And Cisco switches are VTP servers by default. And then there'll be client switches as well. There's also another one called a transparent switch. We'll talk about that a little later in another video. But the, the VLAN names, the VLAN numbers and names are added to the VTP server. Okay, that's where they are configured. Then over the 802.1Q trunk links, VTP sends that those VLAN numbers and names, if the names are optional, uh, to all the VTP clients. Okay. And this information, first of all, is propagated throughout the, the VTP domain. We'll talk about more about that in a moment. Uh, but the, the VTP client switches will synchronize their configuration information with 
the VTP server in this case. Okay, so a switch, a Cisco switch can operate in one of three modes, uh, one of three VTP modes. It can operate as a VTP server, and a server allows, allows you to create, modify, and delete VLAN information. It can op operate as a VTP client. Now, you cannot create, modify, or delete VLAN information on a client switch. Uh, how, but the client switch will synchronize its information with the VTP server switch. So any information configured on the server will be synchronized with the clients. A VTP transparent switch will you can uh, does not uh, does not accept does not get its configuration its VLAN configuration information from the server. You have to do that independently on this switch. However a VTP transparent switch will forward VTP messages onto other switches. Okay. Now, a note about VTP transparent switches, if you're configuring extended VLANs on a Cisco switch, that switch must be in VTP transparent mode. Okay. Okay, there's three VTP versions, versions one, two, and three. Um, the default is version one, and it's really the focus of, of our discussions. Uh, VTP two is not much different than VTP one. It actually supports legacy token ring networks and actually supports some other features like uh, uh, unrecognized TLV values, but it's very similar to, to version one. Version three actually has several enhancements to VTP, but it's limited to right now certain higher end switches. So our focus is gonna be on VTP version one and version two, if you wanna look at it that way as well. Okay, a feature that we won't be talking about too much, but I wanna mention uh, is VTP pruning. So what VTP pruning is all about is, let's say we have a switching domain here, like you can see here, and switch four and switch one each have a port that is associated with the red VLAN. Okay. So because switch two has uh, uh, this trunk here, this trunk link here will uh, send traffic between these two devices, let's say A and B, uh, on this red VLAN, it also has, has to uh, forward over its trunk links information pertaining to, or Ethernet frames pertaining to the red VLAN. However, if there are no devices on switch five, switch six, or switch three that belong to the red VLAN, you can enable a feature in VTP called VTP pruning. And flooded traffic, let's say an ARP request from B here that is sent out and forwarded across the red VLAN, and A will receive it, that flooded traffic will not be sent out these other ports here, okay? Because there's no devices belonging to that VLAN. Okay? That's a, a separate feature called VTP pruning. VTP authentication. What VTP authentication is optional, but hi highly recommended that your VTP domain this whole area here, all of our switches enabled with VTP, that we use domain name and password. So somebody just doesn't add a client switch, a rogue client switch, and all of a sudden is a member of our VTP domain. Because that can actually cause problems. Even as a client switch, there's an issue I will talk about in a later video where it could actually override the VLAN information on all these other switches. Okay. 
So we want to have a domain name and, and, uh, and password to, to protect our VTP domain. Okay, this was just an introduction to VTP. In later videos, we'll talk about uh, messages, configuration, and other things.